Welcome to Kids Doc Talk with Dr. Jenny. Dr. Jenny is a board certified pediatrician and is the director of telemedicine at Pediatric Associates. Welcome to Kids Doc Talk with Dr. Jenny. Today's guest is Dr. Jonathan Williams talking to me about chores. Dr. Williams is a board certified pediatrician with additional training in childhood and adolescent depression. He grew up in Davis County and completed his undergrad education at Weber State, followed by medical school at Rocky Vista University College of Medicine near Denver. He completed his pediatric residency at a combined military civilian program at Dayton Children's Medical Center and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. For four years afterwards, he was an active duty pediatrician, medical director, and deputy flight commander at the Travis Air Force Base in the Bay Area. Dr. Williams' recent TikTok fame stems from his insightful discussion on the importance of chores in kids. Welcome, Dr. Williams. Hi, Dr. Williams. Welcome. Hi, it's good to be here. So you um, gained some some fame, fame and popularity for talking about a topic that um, I think is so important to me, both as a parent and as a pediatrician. So I'm, I'm excited to talk to you about uh, something that sounds like you spent a lot of time counseling um, patients and families <laughs> about. It's chores, right? Having kids um, participate, right? Chores, do, do, do yeah. stuff around the house. Um, so let's maybe take a step back and tell me from the beginning, what are the benefits of involving kids in household chores? How does it actually contribute to their you know, growth and development? Man, so many things, right? So many things. I think underlying everything is uh, as, as children develop and grow, at one point they're going to learn and understand or they should hopefully learn and understand that they are that they are part of a larger picture right and i think that chores around the house helping parents helping siblings take care of the day-to-day -day tasks helps kind of strengthen that thought that like oh well, look at that there are other people here around me and they have needs too oh my gosh right so i think that's underlying what some of the studies are showing, but you can also, man, as we get into it, you can see how doing chores the right way is going to help with uh, fine motor skills, right? You can do chores the right way and learn a new skill. You can do chores the right way and learn social skills, give and take back and forth, right? So there's lots of opportunities for growth when kids are doing chores on a regular basis. I have to ask because I'm you know, like you, I'm a general pediatrician. And when I do well visits, you know, I'm always scrambling for like, okay, I want to hit like, you know, we talk about anticipatory guidance, the things that we yeah. counsel families on. I want to hit like my, my top, my top three, because right, we're so short on time. So I always do my patients. So I always do car seats, uh, swimming, like those are those are the, the main ones. So right. how did you how did you like throw chores in there? How did this become an interest? <laughs> and how do you how do you bring this up organically? You know, honestly, like I I love, as, as most general pediatricians, like I love to get to know the kids sitting in front of me, you know, so you have that like two or three minutes of just like, hey, there's six year old. How are you doing? You know, and so lots of times I used to ask, like, what's your favorite vegetable? And I mm -hmm. would do that just to yeah. watch the mom like squirm uncomfortably. Right. As the kid would be like pizza, you know, so I, I used to love that. And then it just kind of slowly I, I, I came across some research that said, like, there are some benefits to doing chores. And so that that piqued my interest, obviously. So I just started to kind of ask kids like, hey, what are your chores around the house? And again, like moms just kind of sit there like, oh, how's he going to answer this? You know, and you get answers kind of all over the place, but it just started as something interesting to me. And then as I've learned more about the benefits of chores, right? Like sometimes that's part of my anticipatory guidance is I'm also trying to talk about, you know, sun safety and car yeah. seats and this, that, and the other, and all the other stuff that we have to talk about. I love it. I think I'm going to add, we're going to add it on because my big three right now, I do helmets, we do swimming and I do car seats and maybe I'll, I'll start throwing chores in there. Yeah. Um, huge well, because how can you not talk about helmets? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like so many. Important right. Right. Things. So I, so we're not replacing anything, but I, yeah. I think this is just this make is that appointment an hour long. You'll be, you'll be fine. Exactly. Oh, sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. easy. Okay. So I think this sort of begs the question of like, particular chores that are appropriate because I can hear you know parents are going to be listening to this you're like yes chores sounds amazing and we're going to get kids to do chores you set everybody out in the living room like kids we're gonna do chores like oh then what right so I have in my household we have kids ranging from as old as 11 all the way down to like a year and a half um, so what are like appropriate you know chores for different age groups yeah, I really think like year and a half, 15 months, 18 months is a reasonable time to start certain chores, right? 
Um, I love the idea of involving a preschooler and just putting things away in a very basic way. Like kids know how to put folded socks away in a drawer or help put towels away in a drawer. Or I really like the idea of maybe we're putting the groceries away and we're going to put away everything that's cold first, right? Or can you find anything that's purple? Let's put away all the purple stuff, right? And at 18 months, we have the developmental skills to do those things. And now they're learning additional things on top of that. So I think that's a reasonable time to start. I love that. Do you look for any specific milestones before saying, okay, this kid is either chore ready or this kid is ready for a specific chore? Yeah, that's a tricky one, right? Because every family and every kid's going to be just a little bit different, right? Like you always have to be aware of kids that are developing at an atypical rate or have their own struggles from a developmental standpoint. So really that's up to the parents to kind of decide. But I would say if we err on the side of sooner the better and like just start easy, right? Like my kids are not perfect at chores, right? Like I I have my my seven or eight year old, right? Like they're going to maybe wash the the kitchen chairs or something. And I guarantee you, if I go and look at those kitchen chairs, they are not done perfectly. But I think that the idea is we're trying to get some help out of them again, just so that they kind of understand from a social and developmental standpoint, like, okay, I'm helping a part of the larger team here, but each parent's going to have to dice that just a little bit differently based on your kid. I think that's a really important point. The goal here is not to get the chores done. That may be a secondary gain and eventually should be. But the primary goal here, right, is like teaching the chore to the child and all the benefits that come as a result of that. Exactly. So I have a 12 year old. He's a great worker. He is the poster child for ADHD. Bless his soul. But he is a good little worker when he's focused. Right. Yeah. And he is. We have this little vegetable garden. It is not much. We have like four rows of like some tomatoes and some corn. Right. Like it is not a huge task. He is in charge. And he's in charge of assigning his siblings what weeding chores get done. He's in charge of making sure everything gets watered, right? He's in charge. But I'm going to tell you, like, one of our pepper plants went missing. No (laughs) one knows where this entire plant went. And do I care? No, I don't, right? Like, I care about my kids out there working much more than I care about, well, how did an entire plant seemingly go missing? There were peppers there. You know what I mean? That's not as important to me as raising my kids. I love that. So I can I can anticipate. I think most people are. I think are really on board with this, and this resonates really well with a lot of par- parents. But I could see some pushback being like, "Listen, my kid is in school all day long, and then we have like this activity, and this activity, and this activity. Like they don't they don't have time for chores. By the time my kids get home, like it's you know we barely have time to eat dinner, and then homework, and then it's time for bed. Like h- how much is like an appropriate time for kids to be actually participating in chores?" Yeah, again, that's a hard one. Like, it's going to be specific to each parent and kind of what works there. I I always, and you see this as a general pediatrician, right? Like, the kids that we're taking care of are probably a little bit overly stretched, I feel like, at least in my population that I take care of. Because as soon as they're home from school, they've got dance at this time, they've got soccer at this time, and then they have to do their homework. And, you know, what? and it's just like, we're not allowing a lot of you know, interactive, imaginative free play. We're not allowing a lot of times for chores. We're not allowing time for like enjoyable book reading and just a book that I've chosen for fun from the library, right? So we're not seeing a lot of those things that are very, very beneficial. So my first step is maybe as a parent, you have some discussion as to like, where are our priorities here? Is my child going to be a professional ballerina? And there's nothing wrong with like the social structures of going to karate practice. That's fantastic. But I think that we're always just trying to balance where our priorities are. And I think that's at least worth the conversation. I agree. I see a lot of, a lot of, I call it overscheduling, right? And and overcommitment. And it starts, I feel like I'm seeing it start younger and younger and younger. And so I I agree. I think that maybe is is part of the problem. The question really isn't how long should we be spending on chores? The question is like, are we maybe spending too much time on, on other stuff? Completely agree. And, you know, it's just like one of those things where like, oh, yeah, a little socialization is good. So a ton of it must be better, you know, and I'd argue maybe dial back. Like I really prioritize my kids having like free time, like just unstructured free time to use their imagination. People are scared to have their kids be bored. 
Um, oh, yeah. Because it feels uncomfortable. It feels uncomfortable for me as an adult to be bored, yeah. right? That's why, right, there's all this stuff with, you know, social media and, and, and being sort of, you know, married to your phone. And I think it's uncomfortable for parents to have children who are bored because we feel responsible. Like, oh, no, something has gone wrong. And I think it's really hard to like come to terms with like nothing has gone wrong it's okay that they're bored there's actually a lot of benefit right there's a lot of creativity that can come as a result of that i think you're spot on that's another tiktok i did that got a lot of views and interplay and comments was like the importance of boredom right that's something that we're robbing from our children and as you know right like a lot of creativity and a lot of brain development comes out of just watching what your kid comes up with when there's nothing else to do and I think these two concepts sort of go go together because if you have a kid who's moping around, there's boy, there's nothing to do. Hey, you know what would be great? The floors really need a good mopping. And there you go. Or even <laughs> better, like help me with this right now. Like I'm doing yeah. such and such. Let's do this yeah. together and turn Let's it into a game. And yeah. now you're having a chance for back and forth conversation with your child. You're teaching your child a new skill and they feel like, man, I helped somebody today. And yeah. that feels great. I love it. So let's talk about maybe kids who are either on the spectrum or um, have, you know, delays or anyone, any child with special needs. How can we make this accessible to them? And any any sort of adaptive things that um, parents can do? You know, that's a great question. And as you know, like kids on the spectrum, it's called a spectrum because it's mm -hmm. a spectrum, right? You know, I have just like you, kids all the way from like nonverbal, you know, they just pace around the room and, and mm -hmm. that's their best day to yeah. kids that are just a little bit spectrum -y, but otherwise meeting other milestones. So it's going to be, again, a real personal thing between parents and that child. But I'll tell you, like, give your kid the benefit of the doubt. I think that we don't really ask enough out of our children. If we're ever going to err on one side, I feel like we're just kind of tiptoeing around like, well, my kid's on the spectrum, you know, he can't put his own socks away. Mm -hmm. I think that like maybe given some consistency, right? Again, depending on the child, I never want to take away from a mom who feels like they're really struggling and doing their best with the kid on the spectrum. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I feel like we really sometimes see that used as a crutch or an excuse to not ask anything out of that child. When And, and in the reality, like, doing chores or being more involved in those kinds of things might really show some benefit for them and for their socialization skills. I agree. I agree. I think for sure, sometimes we undersell um, kids really of, of, of any ability, but certainly sometimes I see it more frequently um, in kids who are, who are on the spectrum. Do you yeah. ever see like the opposite end of this where like parents sometimes this happens maybe in larger families where you have an oldest child and then like lots of younger siblings where there's almost like a parentification happening where it's like too much towards and too much responsibility and like you're seeing a 12 or 13 year old who like you know babysits nine kids yeah i feel bad for the people that watch your podcast because like two pediatricians saying give chores but not too much yeah. but not too little right. you know what i mean like find that sweet spot or else you know what i mean right so of course you can you can overdo it right like so many comments on my little tiktok was like oh my gosh my parents made me do all the chores while they just sat there and my younger siblings were just playing and that hurt and I'm still yeah. hurting, you know? So there is that sweet spot. Like we're not, we're not having our kids do chores to like make your day easier, right? Like that's not the yeah. point, right? I think that we do chores to work together and to teach your child those selfless kind of life skills, right? If they're overloaded with chores, Right. Then they don't have those times like that we've talked about for boredom, for imagination, for reading, for homework, all the other stuff that's important. So one thing I want to call out that I think comes up like as a common theme here on these episodes is like if this sounds hard, it nothing has gone wrong. Like th this is tough. Yes, it's probably much easier for you to do it or to for you to put the groceries away than to involve a toddler to help you put the groceries away. Like we're not saying that this is going to be helpful or easy, at least in the beginning. Like, again, that's not the goal. You're exactly correct. You're ex the goal is raising kids, right? Like that, that's the goal, right? And, and, and sometimes it takes me going over the job two or three times with them until we've accomplished what we really wanted to accomplish. I'm doing my best to have my kid have that sense of accomplishment. I'm doing my best to have my kid work hard and do a good job. But like, again, they're children, right? They're never, they're rarely going to do something up to like my level of expectation for what a clean kitchen looks like. But again, my job is to help them and guide them as they slowly transition into adults that can clean the kitchen. 
Do you have any tips or tricks for kids who are just like not on board with this? Because I could see like my toddler being really excited about this and my 11 year old being like, uh, no, especially <laughs> if it's like this kind of <laughs> coming out of nowhere. Yeah. So any tips for like engaging with those like, you know, preteens or teens or just in general kids who are just like resistant to this idea? Yeah, that's that's hard. Right. So first I'm going to say start early. Right. So it becomes yeah. a pattern that they're used to and an expectation that's just like, hey, I pitch in, you know, I, I do those things. But if you're just like, you know what, I should start my kid doing chores because we haven't done great on that. And I'm going to do a little bit better. And my kid is 12. It's it's going to be hard. Right. Like it's yeah. it, it's going to be a little bit difficult. I will say, though, give your teenager or your pre teenager a, the benefit of the doubt. Right. I think that if you sit them down and say, like, look, like you're growing up. Like you're getting old, we're getting into seventh grade, we're into ninth grade now. There are some things that I, I want to teach you so that you're a successful adult. And we're going to start by showing you what all the buttons on the washing machine does, right? And you just, you give them that power to be more adult, be more independent. And sometimes that's going to help. Now, a lot of teenagers are going to see right through you, right? Because <laughs> they're smart and you're just going to be as consistent as you can. Do you find that positive reinforcement? Um, I know for, for younger kids, I'm a fan of that. Like anytime we're trying to get um, a desired behavior, right? This works really well in toilet training, et cetera, right? Stopping to bite, stopping to hit, all the things that like, uh, again, the toddler age that I think responds really well to positive reinforcement, sticker charts, et cetera. Is there any like similar equivalent to that when we talk about older kids? Because again, they're smart. So I feel like if I start yeah. doing ch sticker charts with, you know, my, my 11 year old, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah, I think I think that we need to be sincere with our older kids. They're smart, right? Like they know if you're like, great job, you know. But listen, if I have a kid who really helped me out, I'm gonna tell them, do you know what? That was that was honestly so helpful. I didn't know how I was gonna get through that. I was stressed out about that and I had this, 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 and this mm -hmm. to do. And since you took that off my plate, I was able to get it done. And I really appreciate you for doing that. Right. If you're sincere and and honest and tell them exactly where it is that they're serving needs of other people that's going to resonate with them i love that i love that it's, i mean it's it, again if it sounds like work i just want to like emphasize this love it sounds like work it, it is it is it is it's oh yeah parenting's hard right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> parenting parent try like right we're all like failing as parents right but like but like trying your best at parenting and and trying to be a, a quote-unquote good parent it's tough right it's it's hard to implement and it is work I think that's that's probably really reassuring for people to hear because we have two pediatricians who are like, right, like you said, like do it, but not, but don't do, do it like yeah. this. And we're both like, like, this this is hard. Yeah. So it's not something that you're just gonna get right right away. It's it's a process, yeah. and um, all of parenting as 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 is all of parenting, just like learn it, learning and growing as as we do yeah. it. We're just kind of making it up as we go along. I tell so like you know when you've got like the brand new parent sitting in your office with like this baby that they just took home from the hospital and they just look so lost you know and they're just like oh my gosh I don't know what to do he hiccups all the time you know what I mean yeah. I love to tell them and this is true I'm like you know I I'm a I'm a pediatrician my wife has a master's in like development and education like if there's two people that should know what they're doing it's us we are clueless we are making this up as we go the best that we can and that's all that we're going to expect out of any parent is just to do the best that you can I love that. I love that. I think that's such a positive, sincere message. Any any other takeaways, anything that you really want to make sure people walk away from this conversation knowing? You know, I feel like sometimes when I talk about like, hey, here's a better parenting strategy or here's something you might implement. I think sometimes the natural thought is like, I'm not doing a good enough job mm -hmm. as a parent, right? Right? Like, oh, ooh, I failed my kids. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, like, you're doing great. You know, if, if you're someone who's listening to a yeah. pediatric podcast about how to raise children, you're doing pretty good, right? Like if you feed your kid a vegetable every once in a while and buy them new shoes when it's time to buy them new shoes, you're a great parent and cut yourself some slack. I have never met a parent who feels good enough about their parenting. And I know a lot of really great parents. That's awesome. Again, really reassuring and 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 certainly I, I think a great thing for us to probably keep keep reminding ourselves and our and our families yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah, we're all just doing the best. Cut yourself some slack. It's gonna be messy, you know. Awesome. Well listen, thank you so much. This this was fantastic. It's such an important topic. I appreciate you coming on and chatting with me about You're it. You're welcome, someone. Okay, good to talk to you. 
Make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for joining us on Kids Talk Talk.